start a session. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. shall we start a session now, or how is it? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, looks good. Uh, thanks, uh, ISTM, Dr. Sajeev and uh, Dr. Srivast, uh, Sailesh and Dr. Shweta for uh, giving this opportunity to uh, present. Uh, what we will be talking on uh, uh, would be on modeling of optical physics using COMSU multiphysics. Uh, just to give a brief uh, introduction uh, uh, of uh, my experience with COMSU. So I have been working in COMSU for the past uh, seven years. Uh, and after that, I joined Triple ATM Kanchipuram as an assistant professor. <clears throat> uh, my work is more towards uh, uh, developing optical devices uh, for uh, cancer diagnosis, clinical diagnosis. But the work that I'm, I'm going to uh, talk about today and the next five days would be more about simulation and how we can use uh, simulation, optical simulation uh, to be precise in in many applications such as optical filters, plasmonic devices, scatterers, uh, it could be uh, optical waveguides, or it could be uh, nano scatterers as well. So there are a lot of applications that you will come across, but the most important thing is the basics. So we will start with the basics. So, so this is the console GOI. So I, I, I uh, when form was sent and around uh, 50% uh, were kind of a beginners. So what I will go is I will just uh, go through this uh, GUI of Comsol first. What I will recommend is that uh, the Comsol 6.1 was already shared with you guys. So uh, what I assume is that you have already installed Comsol at your place. Okay. If you if not, then please install. Start installing it. It's a 7 GB software, so it will take uh, at least half an hour to one hour to install. So first, you, you if there is some installation issue like online installation then you can go with an offline installation that is you can install the complete iso file and then you can uh, once the complete 7 gb file is downloaded then you can um, uh, use the trial license that uh, dr uh, Silesh has shared with you guys and you can uh, install uh, the console okay so uh, uh, with a quick uh, uh, raise of hands or chat can you let me know how many of you guys have installed Comsol? You can just uh, write in the chat box that you have. Uh, uh, they are actually uh, raising their hand. So by raising their okay. hand, they are saying that they have installed. So you just okay. look at the participant list. You will see that so okay. many people have raised their hand. Okay. So yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, already installed. Okay. Yes. yes. The click of uh, raise of hands is there. So that's good. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So I see a significant number of people have uh, raised their hand. So so I assume they have already installed Comsol. That's good. Comsol 6.0 is the question. Yes, definitely Comsol 6.0 is sufficient. Uh, you don't need to install 6.5. If you have 6.0, then it's sufficient. You don't need to install 6.1. Uh, um, Comsol 6 5.6. Yeah, that also should be fine. Not a problem. Okay, looks good. So, so once you open your uh, console, you will see something like this in your screen. So let me just enable the properties of my mouse so that you guys can see where my mouse is going. Okay, looks good. Yeah, so now you can see where my mouse is going. So once you open console, uh, there is an option to choose which dimension you want to model. Now there are different types of dimensions that you can model. For example, you are modeling uh, optical fiber, for example. Okay, so in optical fiber, you have a core and then you have a cladding. Fine. And then you have an actual 3D structure like this. But if you actually want to model the modes that are going to propagate in an optical fiber, you do not actually do not need to actually model the complete 3D structure. Okay, you can actually model only a 2D cross section of the optical fiber. For example, you can model this cross section of your optical fiber. Okay, so this is a 2D cross section that you take it in your 3D optical fiber. 
And then what you actually model would be something like this. So it would be a core and then it would be the cladding. Okay. So in your 2D structure, you will model something like this. So whether you want it to model 2D or 3D, you can choose based upon your application. Now you want to model propagation of your optical fiber, then you can go ahead and model 3D, some losses due, due to propagation. But if you want to know what are the modes that may exist in optical fiber, then you can go ahead and use your 2D structure. Okay, so you can see over here, there are different space dimensions that you can choose from. Now, for example, the most simplest thing is always to use 2D. So if you are a learner or even you have experience, it's always good to use uh, two dimension instead of three dimension to start. If you can exploit the symmetry of your nature, uh, symmetry of your, uh, uh, of the work that you are doing. So what I will do, I will use this 2D dimension. And then uh, Comsol asks about which physics that you want to uh, work with. So I will go to the optics and I go to the wave optics. And you can see that there are five uh, interfaces that you have an option with. Now each of the or each of these interface have their own uh, features. Most of the features that we will be working on would be on EWFD, that is electromagnetic waves frequency domain. So this would be the uh, feature that uh, or interface that we will be working on uh, most of the time. Uh, you have been enveloped, especially this is required when you want to model very long structures. Okay, you have very long structures. By long, what I mean is in order of mm, uh, not in the order of centimeters as well, because uh, modeling optical structures in order of centimeters is like really challenging. You need a very big computational system. Uh, time explicit transient, both are a form of a modeling where you want to model uh, time domain analysis. So you want to, for example, you want to la launch a, a temporal Gaussian pulse uh, through an optical waveguide or it could be a opti uh, uh, optically uh, transmis uh, transmissible media and you want to see uh, how the, yeah, and if it is a lossy domain, so how the pulse, Gaussian pulse, it is actually decaying with respect to time. So then you can go ahead with uh, the time explicit. But most of the work that we will be doing would be a frequency sweep. So that is, we will be launching a single uh, frequency uh, uh, we will launching a plane wave uh, with a single frequency and we will try to see how uh, how that particular plane wave interacts with the domain. So most of the time we will be using this EWFD interface. So I just click on this add and you can see that this would be added in, into the physics interface that you want to model. And then I go to the study node and then it, it asks me about which type of study that you want to do. Now, uh, all of these studies are actually interlinked. So uh, uh, just to say that I want to study, for example, eigen frequency analysis and frequency domain are interlinked. For example, you want to know the modes of your optical fiber. You can understand the modes of a resonator. So all the modes that you want to analyze or model can be known by either eigen frequency analysis or frequency domain analysis because we are solving the same Maxwell's equation. So either you can do a frequency sweep of a large uh, range of frequencies and then you can see the peaks and from there you will get to know those are the um, uh, resonating modes at that, that particular frequency or you can do an eigenfrequency analysis to know the peak frequency. So either way is you can actually go and then there are other nodes, uh, other studies for example if adaptive frequency sweep. So if you have a very large uh, range of frequency that you want to work with then you can use an adaptive so it will automatically choose when it needs to have a, a very fine steps size and then a uh, coarse uh, step size so it will just automatically choose them mode analysis and boundary mode analysis are to understand the modes that may propagate through any optical structures uh, right now what we'll choose is a simple frequency domain okay so if you guys are doing along with me you can choose the same thing First thing that I do was to select 2D space dimension and then I go ahead and choose the 
optics uh, wave optics electromagnetic waves frequency domain click on add study and then finally i go ahead and choose the study that is frequency domain study and i click on done so this is the screen that you will get uh, once you complete the model wizard and even if you are expert i would always recommend that you go through model wizard rather than blank uh, window so uh, i hope you guys are able to do till this step able to complete in this uh, manner in model wizard you can just drop a chat in the chat box that yes kind of thing so i know how many people are actually following me so that i can follow up with you guys at a later point or how many people are doing along with me hands on uh, so i can actually get a feel of it Okay. Yeah. A raise of hand is also good. Uh, should be good. Okay, looks good. Cool. So that's good. So, and if you have any questions at any any point, please do not hesitate to ask me at any time. You can ask me any question at any time uh, related to Comsol. Uh, so the first step that you see over here is the model builder. And uh, what you say, see over here is, uh, uh, this is the model builder over here. You can see over here. Okay, let me just change the color, perhaps uh, line. Okay, so this is a model builder. Let you see over here. Okay. And all the work that you're going to do is going to be more or less in the model builder. So the approach is from top to bottom. That is you first build the geometry, then you add the materials, then you apply appropriate physics conditions, then you add the mesh, then you use the type of study for your analysis, and then finally you post process the results. So more or less how you're going to work is going to be in the model builder. The same approach is also available in the ribbon pane you can see in the top. So you can see this geometry building, then you have sketch, then you have materials, physics, mesh, study, results, that is nothing but post processing. And then the developer node, for example, you want to write some code and attach along with this uh, domain. Okay, so that is what you can also do. Fine. So the first thing, as I said, is to make a geometry. Now to show showcase you you guys how to make a simple geometry. What I will do, uh, what anyone from optics or uh, RF background needs to do is always use the uh, any structure that you want to make. Uh, make the width to be as a function of lambda. Okay. So the first thing is to write the wavelength, operating wavelength which you are working with. For example, it is a 600 nanometer, nanometer, uh, 600 nanometers wavelength. So I choose this wavelength as 600 nanometers over here. So uh, ideally, it's not good, or actually, you should not write something like this lambda because, uh, or lambda not, something like this because it's a reserved name that you can see over here. It's mentioning that it's a reserved name. It's so always good to use something like LDA naught or lamb naught or F naught, L naught, something like that. <clears throat> so my operating wavelength is around 600 nanometers. And uh, now I'm talking about the dimensions that I want to work with. So for example, I want to work with the width of uh, uh, LDA naught times uh, five. Okay. So now I, I will be always talking about in order of uh, operating wavelength. Fine. So the first thing, as I said, uh, is to make a geometry. To make the geometry, I just right click on the geometry and I add a rectangle. Okay. 
So here it's asking about the width. So I can just mention lambda naught by two, for example, and height I can mention as lambda naught by five, and I click on build all. Okay, so I get a structure like this, which is around two wavelength uh, uh, thick and around, around five wavelength long. Okay, so what I did first is I added a parameter L, LDA naught. 600 nanometers uh, and then width just to show show you but i'm not using it so i can just delete that so this is the first thing that i have added lda naught of 600 nanometers the next thing that i add is the geometry section I just right click on the geometry section click on rectangle and in this rectangle i added a width of uh, lambda naught into 2 and lambda naught into 5. Okay. So I hope you guys are able to add or create this rectangle. Okay, so what I want to do is, what I want to do is I want to launch this uh, electromagnetic wave, which is like coming from here to here. And I, I want to have the polarization uh, of this plane wave. So this is a plane wave that I'm moving from top to bottom. And I want to have a polarization in uh, like this. So uh, the <clears throat> electrical field okay so the electrical field is polarized in x direction so you can see this is the x direction this is the y direction uh, hello yes uh, uh, sir can you again explain this how to uh, mention the dimension because while writing the nanometer it is showing some error so Okay, yeah, just a minute, I will just check it. Yeah, so the way you need to write is uh, like uh, 600 and then square brackets nanometer. Okay, what I can do is I can just share it in the chat box. So you guys can actually see that. Okay, uh, so uh, screen resolution I can try, but I don't want to experiment now. Okay, maybe in tomorrow's session I can uh, try to increase the or decrease the screen resolution so that it would be a little bit big. Okay. okay, is it fine now? 600 nanometers. It's a square bracket, so 600 number number has to be in uh, 600 like this, and then units has to be in square brackets. 600 nanometers. So any units that you write is has to be in order of nanometers. Yeah, so once you write this. Sir, I have a doubt. Order. Yes. Sir, actually I'm not getting the rectangle option. Um, yeah, you just need to write. Uh, so first make sure that you are in 2D. Okay, not in 3D. And then yes. just right click on the geometry. And then you can see actually this rectangle option. Okay, thank you, thanks. Yeah. Okay, any more questions? Okay, so basically you just need to right click on the geometry, get on the rectangle, and in this rectangle, you just need to change the value of width and height as LD naught by two as a width. And height as LD naught by five, I mean, into five, not pi. LD naught into two, LD naught into five. Okay, so I just mentioned width as height as. Uh, okay, so once you do, do that, you just. Click on build all. 
and you get a structure a rectangle such as this one fine i, I hope uh, you have uh, you are able to create a structure like this the next thing is as i said it's from top to bottom so the next thing that you need to do is add materials so if you want to add the materials you just need to right click on the material section over here click on add material and there are different ways to add materials so one of the ways to add material would be add material from library okay so just click on right click on materials add material from library and then on the right side you get a uh, lot of options lot of options to add material so they you can actually use this built in and choose air for example okay so very op uh, few of the optical materials are also available for example you have silica glass silicon and water so all of them have the uh, optical properties as of now i will just go ahead and click on air so just double click on this air fine so now i have added the air material as you can see over here the next thing is to add like how are you actually trying to uh, launch this electromagnetic wave okay so for example as i was saying i want to launch my plane wave like this okay i want to have my polarization something like this so um, the direction of propagation is toward downwards and the direction of propagation or direction of polarization is towards x direction okay so if this is y direction this is sorry it's y direction this is x direction okay so i want to launch a plane wave from top to bottom in this way so how do i launch it so there are again different ways to launch the waves what i would be doing it uh, start off with would be the port condition okay so how to add a port condition so just right click on electromagnetic waves frequency domain and you can see there are a lot of features with which you can actually uh, launch the poles uh, launch the electromagnetic wave plane wave so one of them is port condition you can see over here okay so i just click on this port condition so don't be uh, overwhelmed by the number of conditions that you see over here you can just uh, click on the port condition most of the your work will be done using the port condition this is how you excite your system okay right now what i am modeling is just a block of air and how the electromagnetic wave is going to propagate in a block of air so it's something like uh, not an optical fiber but something like the air domain so this is the air domain that i'm trying to model and i'm trying to model how a plane wave actually propagates through the air okay so it's kind of an optical wave which is propagating in the air which an infinite which is going to infinity in all the directions okay so you can see that i have added the port boundary condition over here and i need to choose this boundary in the top over here okay so i choose the port condition and i choose the boundary where i want to excite my system right so as i said i want to excite from the top to bottom and i want to have a polarization in uh horizontal direction right so now go to the port condition over here what do you find so you find that uh, there are types of ports so once you click on this type of ports you can see that there are different ways so most of the time that if you want to make an infinite domain uh, structures what you need to do is use a periodic ports for example uh, periodic ports or rectangular ports uh, is also fine and numeric port is when you do not know the mode that may propagate through the port okay then you need to use uh, numeric user defined is that you uh, yourself define the direction of propagation and all those things uh, what i as of now what i will choose is to use the periodic conditions over here so i will choose this so my port right now is a periodic port 
over here. So I excite my port in a downward direction. So my direction of power would be downwards. You can even see the same thing with this red arrow. Now my direction of uh, the direction of power is downwards. Now I want to see in which direction is my polarization. So in that case, I need to change my mode field. So can you guys tell me uh, in the chat box? So in which direction should it be? Uh, so what should be the value over here uh, in X, Y, and Z? If I want to excite my polarization in horizontal direction, any guess, any intuition? You write in the chat box. What should should it be zero one zero? One zero 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 one. Any guess? Yes, it should be one zero zero. Correct. That's correct. So it has to be one zero zero. That means that my polarization is towards the x direction. So my uh, electrical field is around x direction and can you imagine which direction would be your magnetic field if my direction of electrical field is in x direction so my electrical field is now propagating in horizontal direction and my power is in so this is my electrical field this is my power so can you guess uh, in which direction would be my H field? That is a magnetic field. So this is EX, this is PY or minus Y to be precise. Which direction would be your uh, H field? Yeah. So most of you guys have stated it correct. So it has to be perpendicular to both X and Y. So your H field should be something in out of plane direction. So it will be coming out like this will coming out. So your electrical field is like polarized in this direction. It's moving downwards. Okay. So your power is moving downwards, but your H field is out of plane. So your H field would be coming like out. Okay. Uh, so this sir, thing, everything you can actually visualize. Yes. Uh, I have a doubt means in this figure where I'm seeing the, I means I'm unable to see these coordinates like X, Y, and Z direction. Uh -huh. So where it is? Uh, yeah. So yeah, in uh, 2D structures, the directions are not mentioned in COMSOL. Okay. So you have to assume that this is X, this is Y. Only if you go for, uh, sorry, Y. Only if you go to 3D structures, you get the uh, air, uh, coordinate direction. So by default, this is X and Y is fixed. Yes. Okay. Unless until you use some kind of a, you define a new coordinate system where you um, override your original base vectors. That is your base coordinate system. Okay. That's not what you do most of the time, but usually you work with the default conditions. But default, yeah, this is the x direction, this is the y direction. Yes. Okay, any questions in this regard? Okay, looks good. So let us go forward and uh, my direction of propagation as well as the direction of polarization both have been defined. Um, angle of incidence means if I want to have my excitation with a particular angle. So if this is what I want to incident my plane wave. So this is a plane wave that I want to incident. <coughs> okay. So if this is a plane wave that I want to incident, then I can actually use the angle of incidence to change. So I can change this angle of incidence and it will change how, how much inclined this plane wave is. Okay. So for example, you want to model a plasmonic grating and you want to see 
uh, with the change of angle of incidence, how is the change in the response of the plasmonic grating? So you can just use a parameter of this angle of incidence and then uh, run a sweep and you can see how the change in the transmittance is. That we will do uh, as we go ahead with the session. Okay, so uh, diffraction order calculation is not as of now required. If you go ahead with a uh, diffraction grating that you model, and in that diffraction grating, you will see that not only the zeroth order but even higher order, like first, second, third order uh, diffraction order, uh, might be playing a significant role not just the zeroth order. So in that case, you may need to include higher orders. But as of now, we are just modeling the air domain. So no much of diffraction that is going to take place. So I'm not going to add anything. Uh, if you want to click on this or disable this, it will not affect the results much. So now this is the source. Uh, so I need to model this as a sink because I want to model. This is a mathematical model. So I need to have a source as well as a sink. So you see this is a source that is a power on. So you can see this is the excitation of uh, this as the on. Now I need to make it off somewhere over here. So what I do is I just right click on this port one and the best way is to just uh, duplicate. Okay, just right click on the port condition and click on duplicate. This is the most simplest way to uh, replicate all the port settings. Okay, so in the once I duplicate, I just remove the selection over here. So I clicked on clear selection and I clicked on the bottom boundary over here. Okay. I need to make the wave excitation as sync. So to do so, or to make this boundary to do uh, uh, to work as a sync, it has to make the wave excitation as off. Only then it will act, uh, act as a sync. Now you can see that the color of this arrow becomes dull, a little bit dark as compared to this one. Okay, you can see this is the source and this is the sync port. Okay, so this is actually working as a sync. So I'm going to excite my plane wave from the top and it's going to absorb my plane wave, not going to reflect any plane wave from this boundary. So it's actually work as a kind of an absorber. Okay, any questions till now? The most important is the port condition in uh, modeling any electromagnetic wave uh, application, uh, especially in optics. If you work with RF applications, then it's a little bit different. That is, you need to use long ports to excite. But in the case of optics, uh, more or less you would be uh, using ports to excite your system. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, I am using console 5.5 .5 and there is no option of circular port. There are uh, numerical coaxial as well as circular port, but periodic port option is not there. Okay, uh, circular ports, uh, are you in 2D geometry? Yes, sir. I sir, I am following you from the very beginning, so okay. now it was fine. So which options are there? Sir, it is the first one is user defined, the second one is numerical, then coaxial, and then circular. Okay. Uh, just check uh, whether you have wave optics or not. And you have used this uh, in optics, you have used this electromagnetic wave frequency domain or in your RF module. Okay, because uh, coaxial comes in RF, not in uh, optics. Okay. So okay. you can see there are two physics ways that you can add. So one is through radio frequency, electromagnetic wave frequency domain. So this is nothing but EMW interface. Okay. okay. So this also does a very much similar work, uh, but you don't have uh, the periodic port condition in that. You have a coaxial port because more or less the op uh, coaxial cables you want to excite uh, that you use using this coaxial cable. So just make sure that you use this optics, wave optics, EWFD interface. In that okay, you should sir. be able to get this periodic condition. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, that's good. So any more questions? Uh, sir, uh, hello. Am I am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. 
Uh, yes, actually, sir, I just want to know ki how this uh, numerical rectangular and periodic boundary con conditions, port conditions we are using, how they are numerically defined in this structure. It's not numerically not. Uh, uh, means, uh, for example, you want to see how they are defined, then you want to see the hardwired equations within this, uh, uh, how when are you defining this. So, there's an option known as show more conditions. Okay, you just need to enable this. Fine. And then you just need to click on equation view. Okay, so this option known as okay. show more options and then go on equation view, enable the equation view and then click on OK. Then you get something like a small triangle in front of the port uh, node. And you enable this and you can see the equation view. So you can see the actual hardware equations that is inside. Now you would change from numeric port to a periodic port. All the equations would be actually, not all means some of the equations will actually change based upon what type of port you are using to excite your system. Okay, so this is a little bit for the advanced people. So if you are looking for the first time, then I won't recommend to go inside this as of now. But yeah, as, as you go ahead with some having some more experience, then you can actually go ahead and see the equations inside, tune those equations. For example, you're coming up with a new mathematical model. And you console doesn't have that particular mathematical model or a material model console doesn't have it uh, so rather than using a weak formulation you can actually go ahead with uh, tweaking the original hardware equations okay thank you sir as of now we'll just disable the equation view and i just go ahead with the port condition so i see a few of the questions do you have any questions sir uh, Okay, so yeah, uh, one of the uh, attendees saying E naught value is X of X is one you said, but E naught value is in zero, not changing to one. Yeah, so if you are facing the issue that you are unable to change this value, then you need to do this graphic uh, interface, you need to change it. So for example, you go to the file, you go, so for something you are not able to enter, for example, parameters you're not able to enter or some of the things that you cannot you cannot actually if you even if you double click you're not able to edit it then you can go to the file uh, preference then you go to graphical toolbar or oh, no sorry where you need to go let me go to, so yeah you need to go to graphics and plot windows and then use software rendering okay so Go to file preferences, graphics and plot windows. And in this rendering, you use software rendering. Okay. So then because it's come some issue with the rendering of your uh, computer. So once you do this software rendering, click on OK. So your console will ask you to uh, restart console. So you just need to close the console, save the model first reopen console then this issue would be should not be there if any if it is still there let me know fine now what i have done is that i have excited my port on the top and i am using the bottom boundary as a, a sync port okay so what i'm going to do next is uh, i don't have because this is a mathematical model again so what we are doing is a completely a mathematical model that we are so doing we are solving uh, partial differential equations fine so uh, so if the boundary needs to have some kind of a, uh, uh, some kind of a equation associated with it so we gave the top boundary the port condition excitation port condition the bottom boundary as uh, the sink port condition but we have not yet defined what we will actually do with the left as well as the right boundary over here okay so what i do over here is i apply periodic conditions over here. So what I say is that I apply periodic over here and over here, periodic conditions. So periodic condition means that whatever E field is over here, the same E field would be replicated over here. So same phase that you have over here would be replicated the same phase that you uh, apply over here. So it's kind of a, even if you model this as a small, small structure like this, you can actually model the complete air domain 
like this okay so we're going, we're going to later on extend this into an air slab of silica domain so air and then how it interacts with the silica domain and then we slowly slowly add the diffractor and then see how the difference happen okay fine so so now what we are going to do is we're going to add the periodic conditions so just right click on electromagnetic wave frequency domain and this is the option known as periodic condition okay so just click on this periodic condition and then you can just click on the left and the right hand side okay just click on the left and the right hand side now you can see that there is a source and destination so console will automatically choose which is source and destination you don't have to worry about it so this is becomes the source and the other one becomes the destination automatically you don't need to worry about it now over here there are different kinds of periodicity uh, so basically there are continuity anti periodicity and floated periodicity and each of this condition you can see the equation so here you can see that this is the electrical field at the source is equal to the electrical field at the destination okay uh, now if you choose anti periodicity then there is a phase shift of 180 degrees so you can see a minus sign in front of the source over here and when you choose the fluid periodicity it's basically if you have a uh, angle of incidence to be uh, not normal but with a finite angle of incidence maybe 10 degree 20 degrees something like this so a best case or the most robust case would be to use floquet periodicity so always when you use some kind of periodicity always go ahead with the floquet because it covers everything okay so you can just use the floquet periodicity and for the k k vector instead of user defined you can define it yourself also but console has now come up with their own uh, periodic uh, k k value vector that automatically takes it from the port condition so if you are using the periodic port condition you can just choose this periodic port over here so you don't need to actually uh, write the value of k vector okay so that's it you don't need to do anything else okay just add one periodic condition just choose these two boundary and then choose the type of periodicity as flow quit periodicity you can also go ahead with continuity in our case because it's normal excitation so that's not a concern uh, but at a later stage you might be interested to have an angle of incident so it's not just normal but angle of some kind of incident with which is interacting uh, or sort of, uh, propagating with a particular angle of inclination so that's what at a later stage that you might need to do but as a so at using the <coughs> finite angle of incidence then you need to use floquet periodicity so this is kind of very uh, robust uh, uh, option that you can use because okay, so i will wait for a few seconds for you guys to catch up if you guys have any questions please write in the chat box i can just uh, look into that okay so i see that uh, if you uh, because of some uh, poor network if you have missed that 10 minutes or so don't worry this session is being recorded so you can also go through uh, this session again uh, so it's not much uh, challenge for you guys uh, okay so one more question is uh, what do we actually mean by zero and one how do we interpret um, what if we put minus one instead of one in negative direction yeah that's that's a very good question so now even if you write 100 over here it will still mean uh, 100 okay it's just the direction of your uh, polarization that is the most important thing that is we define over here okay so it's uh, it's eventually going to get normalized internally and then it's going to be used okay even if you use minus one then then also it also means the same thing if you see but the direction of magnetic field would actually change so it's so for example if this plus one is in this direction then minus one is in this direction but what you will see at the later stage but that is all the electrical field is actually oscillating so it's not a particular direction but at a particular instant or a particular phase what is the direction of the electrical field is what you can define with with this okay so we just wait for you guys to do this step Excuse me, sir. Yeah. 
just hold on for a second. Yes, sorry, you had a question. Sorry. Uh, sir, I am not able to add the left boundary in periodic condition one. So it is showing not applicable. Well, yeah, just make uh, sorry. Uh, just uh, sorry for that. Uh, Baljinder, please introduce yourself first. You know, everybody, anybody who ever having any question, yes. first you should introduce yourself so that the trainer should know that to whom you are he is talking to and where you are associated with your institute then you ask your question it's a good okay, practice sir. okay yeah. thank you sir so uh, my name is baljinder singh hira currently i am pursuing phd from iit kanpur in electrical department and my specialization in, in is in photonics so i am working on designing and modeling of optical uh, fiber so as of now so I have uh, implemented single mode optical fiber in console. So I am looking forward to extend my work That's for uh, multi-core optical fibers in 3D geometry. Oh, so what was the question? Uh, you are having this periodic port, uh, periodic conditions you are not able to apply over here and here, you are saying? Yes, sir, I, sir, sir, in the left port it, it is showing not applicable. So it is applicable to the right one. Okay, so just make sure that uh, in port 1 you have only the top boundary and port 2 is the bottom boundary and then okay. there are no other uh, boundary because if for example if by mistake you have selected port in port 2 also you have defined this one then you will you might not get that uh, particular thing over here. Okay, so port 1 should have only one boundary in the top, okay, sir. port 2 ha should have only the bottom boundary and then periodic port you are going to apply this to over here. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, just check it once more. Uh, I don't think so. There should be any issue with this. Okay. So, uh, we will look into this wave equation electric at a later stage. What does this uh, uh, node do? As of now, we only focus on port 1, port 2 and periodic condition 1. Uh, nothing else we are going to change as of now. Okay. Any more questions? Anyone? Okay, that's good. So the next thing is you can see over here is a mesh, and mesh is kind of a very important thing. The good part is that when you are using frequency domain, a mesh is uh, done automatically by console, uh, especially when you are using a, a scalar value to define your optical properties that is real part and imaginary part so now if you use this mesh just click on build all and you can see this mesh small small triangles that is being developed okay now if you remember your width of your okay let me just do it again okay so if you remember the width or the length is uh, pi times the lambda. Okay, so if you anytime model this, you will get one lambda. So this is one lambda. Then you have a second lambda, third, fourth, and then fifth. Okay, so you will get five waves to start to end with. And what does console uh, requires? In uh, the model is that each wavelength so this is one la lambda okay this is one lambda over here okay so what console requires the basic mesh requirement for lambda is that there should be at least five second order elements per wavelength okay for example you can see this is first this is second this is third fourth five okay so it requires at least five triangular elements per wavelength that is the minimum requirement so that is what it automatically twins uh, 
uh, works with that and automatically it creates this mesh. So you don't need to worry about it as of now. But at a later stage, you will see that uh, when we actually tune the mesh accordingly and then we uh, work around with it. But right now, you don't need to worry about it. The requirement is at least five second order elements per wavelength. Okay. So next thing is the study. So over here I can go what frequency I want to work with. So I can just use uh, C constant by LDA naught. C constant is the speed of light. And this is the LDA naught that is the operating wavelength. That's it. Just click on compute and I should get a plane wave propagating from top to bottom. Okay. So I will not plot the norm E plot. I will plot the E X plot. Okay. So I get something like this. So this is what I was mentioning to you guys that this is the peak and then down. Then this is again peak and then down then peak and then down peak and then down peak and then down okay so you can see this is a five five wavelengths that's what you mentioned right so this is the first this is the second this is the third this is the fourth and this is the fifth okay so this is the first wavelength second wavelength third wavelength fourth and fifth wavelength okay and you already mentioned that you have five wavelengths long enough so so in each wavelength there has to be five uh, mesh elements that's what you can actually re-verify uh, in your results so uh, how many of you guys are getting this kind of plot so in the surface plot use ewfd.ex okay so ex means uh, x component of e field okay i will mention in the chat box uh, excuse me sir mm, yes can you just repeat like after the mesh procedure like what has been done in the study okay madam can yeah, you so... introduce yourself first yes yeah uh, myself, Shweta, I am working as assistant professor in Manipal Institute of Technology. Uh, I have done my PhD in photonics. Um, currently, I am working with the integrated optical devices. Okay, that's good. So, your question is uh, on... Uh... Because I am not getting that um, uh, okay. output. It is actually blank green screen for me. Okay, okay. I understand. No problem. So, the first thing after the mesh was to use the frequency domain uh, step over here and the same thing that i mentioned in the parameter lambda naught lda naught just make sure if it is if you mention something else you will get a red color thing so unless until you get a red color thing a white color thing is fine means you are done doing correct okay so if this is lda naught then it is good okay so that's it what i have done nothing else but yeah, if you're getting a green color screen means uh, there is some issue. The issue could be either you forgot to use the port condition over here. So just make sure again that this is a port one. You apply it to the top boundary. Use a type of port as periodic. Wave excitation is on. Uh, it's uh, electrical mode field as 100 or minus 100. Doesn't matter. It just the direction will change. Second thing is the port condition 2, port setting 2. Over here, you need to uh, make sure that it's periodic again, off, wave excitation is off, and the same electrical field mode. Uh, mode. Uh, so, this is the basic setting that we are doing. That's it. And then, periodic condition on the left and the right boundaries using a flow curve periodicity on both the sides. Just make sure that these three conditions are set appropriately okay shweta thank you sir thank you thank you so you're able to see what mistakes you have done or you need I, more time? i'm checking sir i just uh, yeah. i was going yeah, to yeah, no problem. just check it once yes just check it once and also the recording is also there so if you have any follow-up query you this also could be solved not a problem okay thank you sir thank you okay it looks good so once you do the port one port two port three then you mesh 
you don't need to actually click on build all it will automatic build so you can jump to frequency domain and use this operating wavelength over here and click on compute okay so i had more questions from priyanka how to define any other polarization by like circular or elliptical yeah um, so first of all what i am doing right now is a 2d structure okay something like this right so not even like this i am actually doing a model uh, something like this actually so in, and i am modeling in 2d okay so in 2d structures you cannot actually model a circular for direction of kind of a polarization you need to actually go ahead with a 2d axis symmetry geometry okay in that you get a option known as a circular polarization so in the port setting itself you will get uh, an option to choose circular okay now the next question is then how do you excite elliptical so uh, i think then you need to go with uh, user defined and then you need to use the both the direction so if it is an elliptical then you need to make this uh, both uh, uh, you need to have a minor and major value so it has to be some maybe twice one of the axis should be twice the others okay and then you should be able to define uh, the elliptical polarization i think one example is uh, there but yeah we can try it out in the discussion session also okay something which is something uh, different we can spend in more time in the discussion session okay so any more questions uh, if you guys have yeah one question from twinkle is if i want to see the scattering from the structure over a particular wavelength then how do we do it so scattering is what uh, we would be working on at a later point uh, we will be talk about that in a later stage so uh, you can model scattering i will show you how to model scattering but at a later point so we are going to do step by step are we going to use multi wavelength how to define it yeah so multi wavelength is like uh, a frequency sweep okay so for example instead of what as of now what i have mentioned is only a single wavelength okay but what about i want to do a sweep of frequency then you can just right click on the study one and there is option is parametric sweep okay just right click on the study one click the parametric sweep and over here you can get an option so you can just click on add okay just click on this add and over here you can just click on the range option and then you can write it from uh, maybe 500 to the step of 10 to 700 okay so this is step so you start the parametric sweep of the wavelength from 500 step of 10 nanometers and stop at 700 nanometers so i just click on replace and then i use the parameter unit as nanometers that is also very important please don't uh, miss to add a parameter unit uh, from default meters to nanometers because your operating wavelength is not 500 meters otherwise uh, you will get an error of uh, uh, showing that the mesh is yes, difficult to be created okay so then you click on study node and just click on compute and you will get the result of not a single wavelength but for all the wavelengths for example i just click on compute now computer will run for or comps will actually run for all the wavelengths you can see 5.5 i don't know why it's jumping from this to this but yeah you can see over here that it is actually changing now it's running for all the wavelengths from 500 to 700 nanometers so instead of e norm e i write no e x and over here you can see this is for 700 nanometers and i can change it to 500 nanometers you can see that it would be more compressed now but choose 500 nanometers okay yeah my my geometry also i have made it 
the dimension of my uh, or the operating wave as a function of my operating wavelength. So my geometry is also changing. Okay, so that is something else to think about. But yeah. Okay. So, uh, but if you are doing a frequency sweep, uh, please uh, don't use this. Don't use the width and the height as a function of your operating wavelength. You can choose it, for example, some other values like uh, one micrometer or 500 nanometer or something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, next thing, what I want to want you guys to uh, see is how to visualize your results. So one way is to visualize your 2D results. But there's also a nice way to visualize 3D results even if you model 2D. So just right click on your surface and click on height expression. Okay, once you click on height expression, you get something like a 3D figure like this. Okay. It's something like height expression. Just right click on your surface and then you will get an option of height expression. So now even if you're modeling 2D, you will actually see this structure as uh, 3D. Fine. Now the next thing is you want to come up with a very good uh, like animation. For example, you want to see how this plane wave is propagating with respect to the phase. So even if it is your modeling frequency domain, you can actually see the wave that is propagating. So how do we do that? You just need to click on this animation. You all get an option like animation over here. Just click on animation and click on player. Okay. So you click on animation one <coughs> player and over here you can go ahead instead of the sequence type as stored solution i can use a dynamic data extension now this dynamic data extension is an option that uh, allows you to model the animation as a function of different different phase of your wave okay so just click on this dynamic data extension i make the repeat as forever and I click on run and you can see that wave actually is propagating uh, in uh, minus y direction and now you can also see the direction vector that is now seen over here you can see now and now you have moved from 2d to 3d and hence you can see this x y and z direction as well coordinates as well Okay, so if you guys have any questions or any points to be covered or something like that, you can let me know. Hello. Yes. Sir, this is Abdul from National Physical Laboratory in New Delhi. Sir, I'm okay. working in nanophotonics and I want to simulate something at nano scale, so like uh, superconducting nano wire detectors, single photon detectors. So is it possible to simulate such things in COMSOL? Uh, yeah, to an extent, yes. Uh, we will talk about uh, more about this uh, in the discussion session. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. That's good. So any more questions on this thing that I am developing over here uh, on this uh, aspect? I think one question was on. Uh, can you repeat the last animation part? OK. So what I do, I first go ahead and add a height expression. Fine. And then I go to the. Uh, OK. So please make sure that it is EWFT.EX, okay, not any other thing like EY or EZ. It has to be EX. Then you add a height expression. And then the option over here like animation. Okay, just click on the animation and click on the player. So you will go to this animation box somewhere over here. And over here, instead of sequence type as stored solution, you use dynamic data extension. Okay, and then click on the play button. Play or run. So if you do it by default, it will run only for 360 degree phase simulation. But if you want to show a propagation, you can just make it forever 
and then you can just run for uh, multiple times okay the cool, cool part is you can also export this animation for example instead of file uh, instead of player you can make it as a file and i can export it into an untitled uh, wave propagation okay so I, my, I have now exported my animation into a gif format and the good part is that i can just uh, use that gif format in my powerpoints now so you come up with a very complex design as someone was asking about uh, a nano wire simulation that we will discuss in the discussion session more about those things so if you have any specific physics based question uh, we can discuss in the dis discussion session uh, over here it is more or less on these uh, things that we will be try trying to cover step by step so now i have exported my gi format and now i just go ahead and add a, add a new slide over here and i copy paste my animation <coughs> okay you can see this uh, i'll copy paste my animation and i just go to my slide so now i can i can nicely see this animation i can change this resolution to make a very nice animation and this is a very simple structure as of now but what you guys would be developing would be a nano scatterer as someone someone was asking or uh, diffraction uh, grating so animation of those physically complicated structures uh, would be uh, very beautiful to see so the so scatterings of uh, not just a single scatterer but a multiple scatterers all in a complete uh, array of uh, n by 1 structures like 10 by 1 structures or so so it would be a very beautiful animation that you will guys create and you can use those in your powerpoints and it will, it will look like a very good uh, physical understanding that you can actually uh, get from those okay so you can anytime create the animation and uh, use it in your powerpoints okay so i hope you guys are able to do that okay any questions <clears throat> uh, one question from vipin is to how to simulate gaussian beam uh, propagation instead of plane wave uh gaussian beam uh, will do it a later stage so i, I can understand you are interested in Gaussian beam, so uh, we will do it in the next step. Perhaps today we will try to talk a little bit on Gaussian wave, uh, Gaussian beam. If not, then definitely scattering. We will anyway talk about uh, in uh, uh, this. We'll talk about in scattering session. The next question is: Can we also see the magnetic field? Yes, you can. So either you can go and click on replace expression and search for magnetic field like this or if you know what is the name of the variable name of the magnetic field you can just search over here fine just click on okay i just disable my height expression and you can see that i've used hz over here okay so this is the magnetic field that is propagating now this might not be that much intuitive so what i would recommend is that you can actually instead of this okay you can actually uh, use the arrow volume option okay so you can see this is a arrow surface because we are doing in 2d you can click on the arrow surface and you can see that instead of hx hy you can use ex ey okay so now we can see i just disable my surface plot okay now you can see this arrow surface plot I can go ahead and increase the number of grid points from 15 to <clears throat> whatever value that I want to have. Okay, so you can see now I've increased my number of grid points in y direction to 15. And now again, I can do an animation plot. Now you can see the animation plot, animation now. Okay, again using a dynamic data extension and running. So you can see this. Uh, So you can see this is the electrical field plot okay similarly you can also plot the magnetic field but the most challenge is that how can you represent your magnetic field in a 2d plot okay so that is a little bit challenging that you can uh, it's difficult to do in 2d plot so um because the magnetic plot is in out of plane direction okay but the domain that is given to you is in only in 2d you can go ahead and make a 3d geometry and then you can use it so you can see this is 
the electrical field so we have given it 100 zero zero. so the propagation direction is not just this but it always also the other side okay so each point in this um, domain is having the electrical field like oscillating in both the direction okay but the power is downwards okay so it's moving in minus y direction Okay, any questions? Yeah, so one more question is uh, why is the wave, wave propagating in negative direction? Does it have to do something with E0 values? Uh, no, not exactly uh, on that. So you can see this, uh, the direction of uh, the port condition that you see over here. Okay, so the direction of port is downward direction. Okay, and that's why it is propagating in downward direction. Fine. Now if, for example, if you would have put port condition the opposite manner so for example you have your port 1 in the bottom and then port 2 you have given in the top okay so in that case what is going to happen is that the port 1 is downward that is on excitation in the bottom and port 2 in the, in the top that is in the uh, off condition now i go ahead i just disable my parametric sweep and i compute it and you can see now the wave is going to propagate in a opposite direction that is from bottom to top okay now you go and again see the animation okay you make it forever and run oh sorry you make it dynamic data extension okay now you see that the wave is propagating in a bottom to top direction okay looks good so now i have model plane wave propagating in both the direction so i, I from top to bottom as well as from bottom to top direction okay now the next thing is that if you want to model scattering so if you want to model scattering you want to quantify the scattering then port setting is not the correct boundary condition to use because you don't get uh, variables to quantify or plot the scattering so in those cases you use something known as scattered field formulation but the approach is completely different in that case so in what i will do is that the length and width I will make it common in as you can see over here okay and what I will do is I will add a layer of uh, LD and not in all the direction where it's very important to add maybe LD and not by 2 okay something like this and what I will do is I will apply PML on all the outer boundaries okay so how do I apply PML? I just right click on my definition. Okay. And I click on PML that is perfectly matched layers. So I choose these domains. Okay. So I choose this PML structures on the outside. That means that it's an absorbing domain. So I can now model anything inside this air domain. Any scattering is there. And that thing which is getting scattered will get absorbed by this PML domain. Okay. So PML modeling is very important when you use scattered field formulation. Okay. So in the case of scattered field formulation, what I will do is 
uh, I don't need to use this port condition, so I just disable this. Okay, so I don't need port one, I don't need port two, I don't need periodic conditions. Okay, so I just disable them. How to disable them? Just select all three of them, right click on them, and then just disable them. Okay, so I still model air, so again, simple air domain, nothing else. So I go to electromagnetic wave frequency domain again. And over here I go instead of three component vector, sorry, instead of this full field formulation, I need to use the scattered field formulation. It's very important that you need to change over here to scattered field formulation. And over here, in this scattered field formulation, I can give any direction of propagation that I, I want to excite with. Now uh, you can see over here a Gaussian beam is also there. Okay, so you can go ahead and choose the Gaussian beam. Again, it's very important that you use PMLs on the outer domains. Whenever you are using this scattered field formulation, if you don't use PMLs, then there would be reflections on the boundaries and that you don't want to happen. So always when you use the scattered field for scattering analysis, you always use the scattered field formulation. Uh, so you always use the PML, you apply to the outer domain. And as of now, again, I want to model only a plane wave propagating in downward direction. So uh, direction is modeled by exponential uh, i j into k if you know so people who know uh, how to write uh, uh, this uh, plane wave equations so they will know this equation okay so don't worry about the <coughs> Uh, unit part that's fine unexpected unit error is fine you can actually mod right like one into volt per meter which will actually make it uh, but yeah don't worry about that don't worry so most important thing is that you write something like this exponential minus j k okay so if you know if you remember the uh, direction of uh, how do you write plane waves it's something like e x times exponential minus j k right so it's j k dot r plus omega t right remember so the same thing i'm mentioning over here but i'm, I'm only interested on this part over here okay so i just write j k into the direction of Propagation, so I just write it as uh, polarization is out of plane. So if I use this z, so I'm having a finite value of z over here. So that means the polarization is out of plane, and I'm propagate. I'm my uh, direction of propagation is downwards. So I need I can mean or downwards or positive direction. So if I write plus y then it is in positive direction minus y is it in negative direction okay so i just i will okay so i just share that equation along with you guys so this is a so if you guys are in optics uh, you guys might have heard about this uh, plane wave equation okay so the same thing i'm writing the plane wave equation over here so now uh, this equation that i have mentioned over here that means that it is the electrical field is polarized in out of plane direction. Okay, something like this. Out of plane direction. Okay, and it is going to propagate in plus y direction. Again, a plane wave again. So it's something like this. Okay, so let us see. Do we eventually get something like that? Now you can see that mesh. You can click on build all. You can see the mesh for PML domains are like layers. This is automatically console has defined this as layers. Now, why it requires structures like this? Because the electrical field or scattering that you see will uh, will go inside this domain and internally, how they have modeled is that it's uh, having a large structure inside this small domain. And that's why this sweep mesh is used over here. So there's no reflection coming back from here. Okay, so there's some kind of a nanoparticle, for example, so you have an uh, electromagnetic wave hitting the nano scatter and then this scattering field over here okay now you don't want this
scattered field to reflect from this the boundary because you want to model a nano scatterer, a single nano scatterer. So you don't want any reflection back. So in that case, you use something known as PML. And the PMLs, you can use this kind of swept mesh is always used for PMLs. And this is what COMSOL automatically uh, looks into it. So you don't need to worry about it. Automatically, PMLs uh, will have swept mesh. Okay, so next thing again, I what I do is just delete all the previous configurations. I don't need it. And I delete my parametric sweep. And then I go to my study and click on compute. Okay, so let me just click on compute once again. Yeah. So now instead of this, what I will plot? I will plot E Z, right? Yeah. So you can see this is a plane wave again that I'm trying to propagate. And I want to propagate from bottom to top, right? You can just remember in my equation I have given plus y. If I give minus y, then it will from top to bottom. Again, I go to player uh, dynamic data extension and repeat forever. And you can see the plane wave propagating beautifully in this air domain. So modeling this air domain and plane wave propagation in this air domain either using port condition or using the scattering field formulation is very, very important in any simulation. So that has to be the first step that you should be able to create. And only then you should go ahead with any other complexity that you add on your model. Okay. So the most important thing that we learned is how do you model plane wave propagation in an air domain? That was the take home message for today's session. Okay. So the final for some few of the points about this wave equation electric. So this is a way how you define the materials. Okay. So for example, you see over here in the electric displacement field, you have an option known as refractive index. Okay. So in this case, you can change the input material model from diffractive index to relative permittivity. You can write exchangely for between permittivity and refractive index, you can exchange the material models. Uh, if you want to model with loss tangent, loss angle, so based upon what material properties you have, you can choose based upon that. Okay, you, maybe you are modeling some kind of an optical waveguide where uh, the Drude Lorentz dispersion model is available, or some kind of silicon model where Selmer dispersion model is available for that particular model. Maybe your recent paper have been published with the Selmer dispersion model of a new material, right? So you can directly use those Selmer dispersion coefficients and just add them and that particular domain would be modeled using Selmer dispersion model. You can use multiple wave equation electric. You can add multiple as we will see in the next session uh, tomorrow. We will talk about how you actually add a few more wave equation electric to model different different material properties. Okay, today's session was more or less to understand uh, how you excite your electromagnetic wave in different different ways. Okay, one of them is using the port condition and second is using the scattered field formulation. Okay, both of the ways have their own benefits that we will discuss at a later stage. Okay, so any questions till now? Uh, okay, one question is why to select LD not at the out edge of your geometry and what is PML? So PML I defined what is PML? PML is the domain which will um, uh, PML is a domain outside domain where it will act as an absorber. Okay, so if there is some kind of a, I am propagating my plane wave. For example, this is scatterer. So scatterer will scatter the wave in outward direction. Okay, so this domain has to absorb the scattering so that there is no reflection. So you can actually nicely quantify what is the scattering of this uh, scattering coefficient. Uh, of these particular domains okay so that is why you need pml now next question was why do you use lambda by 2 so so lambda by 2 is nothing but the thickness of the pml so usually uh, you can use like lambda by 2 or lambda based upon the requirement so you can change it it's, it's not going to be affecting more because as, as i said uh, in console internally 
this structure is it might look only like 0.325 micrometer over here but it's it's internally stretched to in order of hundreds of micrometers internally so it's not going to affect that much okay Next question is, will the recording be available for today's session for practice? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Dr. Sales should be able to answer that question. Okay. Uh, sorry, can I, uh, what is the question, please? Is the uh, recording, will that be available today for practice uh, or when it would be available, they're asking? Yes, definitely. It will be available. We will be, you know, this recording is available on our YouTube channel. So you okay. go to YouTube and just down uh, type iSTEM India and you would see our channel. There you should see the training going on. Okay, that's good. So yeah, you have a YouTube channel. Uh, we have a YouTube channel which we can go through and see the recording. When we will get the recording session? Uh... See, immediately it is on live at the moment and immediately after that you can see the recording there. Okay. Oh, that's great. What to do for watch this session again uh, so you can see the youtube channel next question for normal mode analysis example fiber model analysis expect except for scattered field analysis should we use pml mm. so fiber optic if it is a straight optical fiber then you do not need to use uh, uh, pml surrounding it so if the modes are more or less going to survive in the core of this optical fiber then you can do away with the pml but if you have a bend of the optical fiber for example so bending of the optical fiber you want to model micro and macro losses because of this bending then there would be some kind of radial losses with which you need to uh, model using this uh, uh, radial pmls so there's an example model available in comsol so you can model with this uh, radial pmls Okay, so, okay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, looks good. So, uh, that uh, leads to the end of this session. Uh, we'll again meet at 5 o'clock today. And if you have any more discussion on this point or anything else, uh, then we can carry on with that discussion at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uttam. So, after half an hour, will you be going to uh, for one to one session? Yeah, it would be a session like this uh, itself. Uh, so, so people would five ask to six. the question, whatever they have, we yeah. can answer it one by one. So it is half an hour break only, right? Yes, at five o'clock we will uh, begin. Sure. So are, are you also going to record the discussion session or we should record only this one? Well, I think we would continue this till end of the session six o'clock. And okay. later, if not required, we can amend, edit that all. Makes sense. Makes sense. Looks good. So, uh, participants have a break of another half an hour. Uh, you get ready with your questions. And Dr. Uttam will address you again after half an hour. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
yeah welcome back for the session uh so yeah if you have any questions please do let me know uh, you can uh, unmute yourself and as well you can write in the chat box if you have any questions yes neelam sharma please go ahead madam any participants please ask your questions good evening yeah please introduce yourself yeah this is this is abdul sir from csr admission csr npl as i asked in the session that uh, is it possible uh, to simulate something at nano structure level with console like uh, actually uh, my work is based on uh, photo detection at single photon detection so it uh, requires lots of quantum optics and i did not find any module in that like uh, quantum optics there are two modules ray optics and wave optics so how to go ahead uh, if we want to simulate such things yeah so what exactly you want to model i want to model how the incident photon behaves when it hits the nano structure of some superconducting materials like superconducting nano wire okay <clears throat> so what i understand is that uh, the way you should proceed is to break up your actual problem into small 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 parts the first thing would be like as you said you want to model a, a, a kind of a nano particle which actually work as a semiconductor uh, but right so it actually work as a uh, semiconductor no, it is superconductor like superconducting nano wire so okay. actually what the, the exact work is like uh, we have superconducting nano wire meander structure and then we want to send them b in beam of photons and then we want to find how the uh, properties of that wire or their resistance are changing so we can apply the electrical model as well as optics both combined so i am asking because it is a, it acts at nano scale level like uh, there will be uh, a physics related to cooper pairs so is it possible to simulate such things uh, so the way that i have seen people model uh, quantum uh, nature in optics is to model like for example a meander shape kind of a metallic structure so this is a which which material are you talking about this uh, like now, uh, any any superconducting materials like uh, nbtin or molybdenum silicide tungsten silicide etc okay i see yeah so the first thing would be to model those structures uh, uh, in comsol and then you need to apply those appropriate material conditions so material properties for example how you define it whether it is you define it using refractive index or you use some other properties like uh, permittivity okay so those materials needs to be defined to those uh, meander shaped materials uh, that uh, structures and next is that single photon is what uh, you you cannot do it with wave optics okay you yeah, what you can do is, is you can excite my... using plane wave yeah, yeah. so you can have to excite like plane wave for example i what i have seen people actually modeling uh, quantum uh, dots using comsol so in that what people do is that they model uh, a uh, plane wave propagation on uh, and exciting to this uh, stru quantum structures and they see the electrical field uh, distribution along this uh, uh, quantum structures and from there they try to know the modes of uh, uh, of that particular structures uh, uh, yeah, on those similar lines but uh, single photon is not what uh, how we can interact with uh, this uh, so you have to model a plane no, wave or some kind of gaussian beam Yeah, even 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 we can have multi photon states so there is no such thing we just want to uh, find out uh, how the structure behaves how the resistance of this meander yes. structure uh, meander wire is changing with respect to the incident beam so uh, then we can approximate it to the single photon level or uh, uh, reduce the intensity of the beam etc so that is the secondary level first we need to just find out uh, how it can be simulated in console so So, have... yeah so uh, as you were saying like photon level so now comsol has different ways to identify photon as waves so if you use optics module then it understand light as a wave propagation when you consider ray optics then 
photo uh, console assumes the light as a photon okay so uh, again but in that particular photon it has a very restrictive limit uh, applications for example those photons could be uh, rays could on be modeled uh, using a single ray double rays but it doesn't capture the whole essence of a uh, of uh, the quantum properties per se yeah so, so what i have seen people using gaussian beam and quantum uh, structures to understand the electrical field propagation as well as quantum uh, or this uh, field which is being uh, resonating within these quantum structures so uh, working as quantum bits like qubits whether it is able to store energy or not or it's able to uh, give out the energy so those things i have seen some of the papers people are working on so you can explore those avenues okay yeah but a single photon is not possible as i said it's like gaussian beam propagation you can think about so for example you have an so i will just share my screen uh, so there is a example of nano rods uh, i'll just show over here uh, so this is an example of nano rods so what is happening over there is that uh, you have many rod like structures like these are multiple rod like structures that are something like this okay so instead of modeling this rod like structure what they they do is that they model a 2d structure like this okay so they you can see this structure like this and then then we have these nano rods so this is the actual 3d structure but what do we model in console is a 2d structure and then uh, then they excite this gaussian beam okay and then uh, what is the energy being uh, stored between this nanoparticles is what is studied okay so i will show you that example over here so i think it's in wave optics nano rods okay so you can open the pdf documentation you can see that if you in so there a lot of applications are available in this application library so you can go over here and wave optics and nano rod you can either click on pdf which will show you a lot of documentation for each of these models okay so here you can see this yes. is a gaussian wave propagation this is a nano particles and then you can so this you can see this is a gaussian wave propagation uh, and these are the nano particles and these are the energy stored between this uh, nano particles so these are nano rods that means is the radius of this rod is order of 10 or 20 nanometers okay so here you can see this electrical field uh, uh, associated in within this uh, nano structures okay so you can uh, you can still model uh, structures in order of uh, nano particles but how you associate the material property and what exactly you want to do so what best what i will recommend is that you try to see how people have modeled uh, such structures in comsol see journal papers i have seen some people modeling quantum uh, resonators or uh, quantum uh, bits using comsol okay so here you can see this as i told wave equation electric has been now used to apply material properties okay so here you can see this they have used drude lorentz dispersion model so the 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 material property that you said uh, lithium uh, or i don't know remember exactly what a uh, neobate uh, the material property so that so superconducting material properties so you need to see how you define it either de by dispersion model the selman dispersion model or drude lorentz or a refractive index so you need to check what are those uh, properties with which you define those material properties and then you can define it and then you can launch the plane wave as i said plane wave or gaussian beam but if you're talking about single photon then a gaussian beam would be kind of a more closer approximation to your single yeah. photon uh, experiment yeah, i think actually i was i was searching for some modeling of that level but uh, i did not found anything yeah so directly this is not available in comsol ah, okay. uh, yeah so semiconductor uh, superconducting few no, even in research papers i found like people are doing with experiments 
like uh, okay. uh, for example we are trying to optimize our structure so that we will get a higher absorption efficiency so this is uh, not done on modeling basis i think so that's why i was asking to you i see i see yeah. yeah but direct example is not kind of possible so completely doing the complete uh, this it requires a multi physics analysis so doing it completely uh, at a first go is not possible so you break the problem into small small parts for example the first thing is only to see the electrical distribution electrical field distribution within your uh, superconducting uh, regions outside and as well as inside the domains so first thing you can try it out uh, if you get those but first thing is to see a, a relevant uh, literature paper or reference paper to uh, see if someone has already done similar work or not that is the most important part to check yeah. Yeah, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Piyali Biswas and I'm a PhD student in uh, at IIT Jodhpur. So I have actually two questions. Uh, one is related to the uh, while I'm uh, selecting materials from the library. So uh, sometimes there is an issue that uh, I'm choosing the material from the library, but, uh, but it is not taking any, uh, sometimes it takes some uh, in terms of variables, like for the real part of the uh, material, real uh, refractive index part. So it is taking uh, something uh, in terms of n, the variable, and for the imaginary part, it is, it is taking like k. But sometimes I'm choosing the material from the library, but it is not taking uh, any value. And the real and the uh, real part and the imaginary part of the refractive index, these are actually blank. And I have to put uh, some, uh, some values uh, obtained from the paper and uh, or from uh, some other sources so why does it happen i mean uh, is there any uh, issue with the library thing or uh, why i'm not able to see those uh, variables which is directly taking or actually what is those variables are actually in and k which is they are taking sometimes uh okay uh, so for example which material you are saying uh, that you are so i'm on? like uh, sometimes i have worked with chalcogenide materials so in that case they have taken that as, as uh, the short class materials like uh, uh, arsenic selenide or arsenic sulfide so they are taking those in terms of those variables in and k but uh, recently i was trying to uh, choose uh, silica simple uh, fused silica material so uh, there are uh, different types of companies like uh, i, I uh, short is there short classes and also um, uh, another one was that i think corning corning was there from corning material so in that case uh, they were not taking anything so the real part and the imaginary part of the refractive index were actually blank and i had to uh, put uh, according to the wavelength i had to uh, find the uh, actual refractive index yeah, and yeah. so that. basically what uh, if you know what is n and k right so n <laughs> is the real part of the refractive index and k is the imaginary part what does the real part does it real part is only responsible for the refraction for mm -hmm. example if your wave is propagating like this and it interacts with another domain and uh, it, it will might bend with a particular angle change in that particular angle will depend upon the refractive index k part is the uh, loss lossy part that is if you yes. have a finite k that means your your plane wave is going to get uh, diminished as it propagates through the domain Okay, mm -hmm. so now you know what is N and K. Now, eventually we are going to work with N and K. So in the end of the day, any model that you choose, it will be N and K. Now, some of the models that you see over here, for example, mm -hmm. as you said, uh, Scott, O'Hara, and all the particular model might not be directly using this N and K, but they will mm -hmm. be deriving from some other equations this N and K. For example, as I was mm -hmm. talking about some time back, is the Selmayr model. Okay, mm. so they might not be having the values of N and K defined. Okay, mm. but they would use a Selmayr model to define eventually the N and K. Okay. okay. So for example, I use uh, the Scott uh, F2 model. I'm not sure mm. if, if so. No, I think F2 model was not taking anything uh, in terms of real or imaginary part of refractive index. Uh, yeah. I had to choose it from the uh, material properties and then I added them. Yeah, so for some of them, you do not need to uh, provide mm -hmm. this material, uh, this e, uh, 
and in case what i'm saying so it automatically okay, okay. takes based upon the selmayer model so it depends upon so even if as you were saying that you have given this uh, nnk so mm -hmm. have you tried it uh, without giving nnk was it was the model solving so yes the model was solving because uh, it was blank then n and k and i uh, put uh, the values of n and k from some other sources uh, at the particular okay. wavelength at that particular wavelength that it worked actually but uh, i was just wondering why it happens i mean i don't i was wondering if there is any problem with the installation of the software or is the is there any issue with the library so that is the thing i was uh, actually uh, wanted to know so this is uh, what according to you it is uh, based on that they are actually uh, following some other model for uh, uh, defining that for material a, yeah for example this uh, scott f2 model i have added okay mm -hmm. so here mm -hmm. you can see over here that the real part and imaginary part i cannot edit okay yes, yes. it is taking this selmayer dispersion coefficients okay mm -hmm. so this is selmayer coefficient uh, that again uh, the internally it will define the nnk okay but okay, as okay. you were saying that this is it's zero is coming okay zero should not come Okay, there should mm. be some mathematical relationship. How mm. it relates that Selmayer dispersion coefficient with the real part and imaginary part. Okay, okay. But if you are saying that zero is coming over here, right? Something like that. Yeah, when actually I am uh, forcefully adding this from the material properties, then obviously the k part is having zero, and I can't keep it zero, so I am putting it there in the uh, ten to the power minus twelve or minus ten something, uh, a very little amount of value I am adding there, and then I am uh, simulating this one. But the real part is there. No, real part was also not there, so I had to put the real part according to the wavelength. The wavelength. Oh, I, so I was what was on. there? <laughs> Wait, there was actually but, nothing yeah. when i'm uh, choosing from the material properties that is the real part and the imaginary part so but it do is you actually know what is the material that you're saying user. do you remember the name mm -hmm. of the material we can try it out now from I, corning remember, from corning, so corning glass, glass i just yes and uh, fused silica fused silica yes h if the last uh, last two anyone okay anyone let's try anyone. both of them uh, let us try both of them. Okay. So here you can see that real part is uh, k yeah, is zero. Yes, the real part is, uh, uh, but the zero. k is zero. Uh, but this real part is a function of uh, n. You can see this n. n. So some variable. N, be, n should be defined somewhere else. You see, this is a real part. See, this is a defined. defined. Okay. This is how n is defined. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So yeah, but yeah, but you said correctly that it's zero. The real part, yeah. imaginary part, is zero. So it's a loss, less domain. <laughs> but uh, real part is defined. So what as should a, I do when it is coming zero? Then uh, you what is do the actual? <laughs> this is what the <laughs> council is giving you. So uh, so it's like uh, uh, there's something that they know and something that they do not know. Okay, so this mm -hmm. they don't know the value of uh, imaginary part, so that's why they have mentioned zero. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's a there are so you can what you can do is that you can go to uh, the literature, you can do the literature mm -hmm. survey of how people have modeled the k imaginary part of the mm -hmm. uh, Corning uh, based uh, flu silica. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you need to similar to this interpolation function. Okay, mm -hmm. you need to add mm -hmm. one more function. Okay, like this interpolation function, and then you define okay. as the k, and yes. uh, define it as the same thing over here. Uh, but it would be a different value over here. The value of k would be different. Of course, of course, okay. yes. And then you again define. And then the uh, that would be fitted. Yeah, as the k. But then okay. it means the both n and k. Okay. But, so uh, I can do that. this thing with that. With yeah, this, you can do one? that. So okay, Comsel okay. will may not have all the information that we need, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, but you can use your own data like what I did NNK that I added. Then okay. you can use it like this by adding it. Okay, so I will be going to the refractive index part and I add another interpolation, yeah. and then uh, K would be yes. defined in that way. Okay. Okay, exactly. Sir. sir, I have another question. Uh, this is related to the meshing because what I have found over this uh, two years working in the Comsol that meshing is the most important thing in uh, simulation. So uh, while uh, it is my experience that sometimes with some uh, 
stru structures uh, i'm uh, working in the optical fibers so in some structures uh, the physics controlled meshing is working fine but for some uh, particular structure uh, it is not taking the physics control it is showing some error and then i'm using the user defined and also sometimes the user defined meshing is also showing errors and it is not working so what could be the possibilities of uh, the errors why these errors yeah. are coming or something like that so uh, for example now if you think yourself to be a developer in council okay so the physics control mesh is a kind of a very simple mesh for example and it is again as i said earlier it is only for structures like uh, a structure like uh, this built in uh, silica glass okay hmm. it is not a function of wavelength single scalar value hmm. it's not a function of wavelength hmm. it's not wavelength dependent uh, material property only then your physics control mesh is kind of a kind of a kind of a working condition actually now if you use a material like this one which is a uh, wavelength dependent material properties in that mm -hmm. case you uh, might need to do a user control mesh but even if you do a user control mesh mm -hmm. okay for example i go from physics control mesh to user control mesh here mm -hmm. you can use h uh, maximum over here so over here you can use lambda not divided by uh whatever is the refractive index of the material divided by mm. 5 like this this is a minimum that you need to put for example if you have a for example we are discussing about fused silica having the uh let me just enable this now you see this fused silica real part the maximum mm. is around 1.57 okay so mm. you use the maximum okay so that will be good for all the wavelengths Because okay that is the maximum that you can work with okay mm. because all the other would be only having lower refractive index the real part as compared to the others so you can just use for example uh, size over here 1 1.56 mm. now you are saying about some errors that were coming so what were the errors that were coming so errors are like that uh... the uh, so, sometimes the dimensions uh, some dimensions are much uh, smaller than the minimum element size this is the it's kind of a warning or error and sometimes uh, there are some uh, some domains are not being meshed okay okay so domains so there are two things one thing is that difference between warning and errors so warning is a thing that you can still go ahead with so it's not a problem you can solve and you can get the results warning is just a uh, measure to say that how you can improve your mesh further but that doesn't stop you to solve your computer study if you get an error that is a red color mm -hmm. thing then mm -hmm. it's something that you need to correct it before you go to study so you are mm -hmm. saying that error or warning was coming in meshing but not in study right or you are getting error in study no not in study not okay, in uh, mesh not in study in the meshing yeah. yes i see yeah so basically if it is a more complex thing for example you said some structures were not meshed okay mm -hmm. for example i had one more duplicate it and i shift it over here like this okay make it a structure into 2.5 so what you can do is that you can right now i'm so you can see this domain is unmeshed not meshed mm -hmm. okay now i can mesh that particular domain itself, right so what i can do is i can add uh, one more free triangular mesh for example and i can mm -hmm. either do it with remaining remaining means all the remaining mesh whatever is remaining which is not mm -hmm. meshed it will automatically mm -hmm. mesh it okay okay so if you are saying that you are getting an error that uh, some domains are not meshed or not error or maybe you are able to see by your visualization that those mm -hmm. domains have not been meshed then you mm -hmm. add a free triangular mesh okay if it is a 3d geometry Uh, mm -hmm. Then you use a free tetrahedral mesh. Okay. okay. For 3D, then, uh, okay. Tet 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 tetrahedral. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So for 3D. And uh, uh, when should I use the sweep meshing? Because uh, sometimes it is happening that uh, when I'm using sweep meshing, then it is uh, the overall domain, everything is uh, getting mesh. Uh, the meshing is all right. But when I'm uh, using triangle, pre-triangular. then it is not working so 
<laughs> yeah so uh, for it, yeah i understand so basically when you are trying to model uh, structures uh, which are like uh, very long mm. okay so like an optical fiber that you yes. are modeling in that case you can use something like a, a map mesh or swept mesh as, mm. as you mm. already know uh, okay yeah so you can use this kind of map mesh or swept mesh mm. uh, that is when very high aspect ratio domain high mm. aspect ratio domain means your thickness is very less but it's very yes. long structure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For example, some kind of a layer by layers model that you want to model. Again, so the width and uh, breadth is very, very high, but thickness is very less. Okay. Mm. So high aspect ratio domains. In those cases, you go ahead and use a swap. Because if mm. you use a pit mesh in those cases, the number of degree of freedoms becomes very, very high, which eventually leads to more time uh, mm. to solve the problem. And there are a lot of things that you can reduce or use, like in solvers. I will talk about uh, at a later stage that mm -hmm. how you can use the solvers to solve mm -hmm. uh, meshing. So not meshing, but uh, 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 issue with the solution. For example, mm -hmm. you go to the stationary solver. Okay, mm -hmm. by default, it's you. So this is a, a, a solver configuration. You open that, and mm -hmm. then you go into this stationary solver. And then over here, it's a direct solver. Okay, direct mum solver. Okay, mm. that is by default. Okay, there's one more solver name that is Pardiso. You can try that if that is helping you to converge your result or not, or you're leading to non convergence. Okay, okay. Uh, one more thing uh, direct solver is the most robust solver, but mm. it provides a lot of RAM. Okay, so uh, mm. that is one thing. One more thing is to use iterative solver. So uh, this will take more time, iterative solver will take more time, but it takes mm -hmm. less RAM. So you can choose between this to solvers also, if you're having some issue with the, uh, you can try, try both of them, mm -hmm. iterative solver. So once you add iterative solver, you can see that the direct solver is disabled. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. So based upon that, you can choose uh, the solvers also to. Okay. Okay. And uh, last question, sir, that uh, when uh, sometimes in the meshing part that uh, we can see that uh, the first uh, un under the meshing uh, tab, the first one is the size. And then uh, there are sometimes size one, size two, etc. So when does it happen? Yeah, for example, uh, for example, I want to mesh differently, different structures. For example, I can add one more size. Okay, so now mm -hmm. this size, I can use that is instead of entire geometry, I mm. use this domain. Okay, like this. Mm. Okay, now this is again something like a top to bottom approach. Okay, that means whatever there is in the top, it will consider it to the bottom. So this size node, I will just bring it above this free triangular mm. because this size node will be working for this free triangular mm -hmm. like this. So it might be confusing. So mm. what? you can do is that it's better to use this size node for this free triangular. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So now I'm saying that free triangular domain, this domain, mm. domain number two. So now for domain number two, this size node would be working. Now I can use a custom size and instead of this, uh, using this as uh, this one over here, I can use 10 divided by 10. So it'll be more uh, Dense. refined. Yeah. So you can see this important part is that uh, this is more refined. So for example, you mm. are uh, feeling that your modes, this mm. optical modes might be surviving somewhere over here. So you can mm. define, divide it into small, small parts. And you mm. can, uh, wherever the modes are going to exist, you can have a more refined mesh. If it is a very uh, minor modes, a very small modes that you are resolved. Because unless until you have uh, the mode size uh defined uh, so both the mode size as mm. well as the mesh size are com kind of related so mm. uh, yeah so you can have different different structures of uh, meshing based upon the size node so that's what it means okay multiple size node for all size node is uh, represented to one of the domain one of the other domain okay. Okay. does that okay, answer sir, your question you. yes sir. thank you sir
Any other questions from participants? Uh, hello. <coughs> hello. Yes. Yes, you are audible. Please introduce yeah. yourself. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. My name is Priyank and I'm a PhD student at ISC and I'm working in integrated optics and mostly I will be working in uh, an isotropic based material like lithium nibate. So my question is related to that. So how we are adding an isotropic material? Uh, first is this. Uh, and secondly, can we also define a spatially varying refractive index material? Like if my refractive index is varying along the propagation direction. So can I define my refractive index accordingly, like in propagation direction also? And uh, other question is like, can we, uh, can we simulate the curve waveguide? Like how my mode is behaving inside the curve waveguide? So can we demonstrate demonstrated that also here in console? Uh, because till now I was uh, working on numerical, but right now I'm trying to shift from numerical to console. So is it possible to possible to do these things? Yeah. Here? So yeah. So let me start answering your question one by one. The first question was on an isotropic material. Yeah, so anisotropic and isotropic blocks out. Uh, so uh, actually, I had a myself written one blog on this anisotropic uh, material. So how to model anisotropic media in complementary physics. So what I will recommend is that you go through this blog. Okay, and here we talk about how to introduce diagonal anisotropy. Uh, then we talk about uh, dispersion curves for anisotropic materials. You can add off diagonal transverse anisotropic, um, off diagonal longitudinal anisotropic. Uh, okay, so there are some papers that we had uh, replicated, and this one uh, <coughs> model also, uh, which talks about uh, similar uh, on, on those lines. So, what I will recommend is that you go through this uh, uh, model as well as the blog. Uh, the blog discusses more on the uh, theory part. And model you can actually learn from the uh, step by step process. So in this model uh, we use. Uh, so this is also available in the library. If you search for N isotropic. Okay, if you search for N isotropic, you should perhaps get this model also. Yeah, N isotropically waveguide media. So here you can see that uh, we have used this. So this is a little bit involved. It's not that straightforward. I understand that, but you go through this. You can see this. Uh, so you can actually enter this uh, equations over here. Okay. So you can enter the off diagonal, diagonal, all the elements you need to enter. And this uh, data was entered based on one of the paper. So this paper is also mentioned in the end. Uh, this. Uh, a directed rectangular wave glide and uh, this one as well as uh, Koshiba paper. Okay, so we try to replicate the dispersion curve of this uh, anisotropic material. So you can go through these papers. That is first question. Second question. What was your second question? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, like, can we define the spatially varying refractive index? Ah, like? spatially. Yeah. So spatially varying. Uh, one more example is available. There is no known as. Uh, Lunberg lens. Let me just search for Lunberg lens console. Yeah. In this case, the refractive index is been modeled as a function of the radius. This model used ray optics medium, but that doesn't mean that you cannot use it in wave optics. Right? You can also use it in uh, wave optics. So what does this do? I'll just show that to you. Lunberg. So just again search in this. Uh, <clears throat> okay, sorry, this is paper. So you can see this one. This is a ray optics uh, model. Okay, so um, it uses uh, a ray optics module. So you can see this. Okay, so here you can see this. So this equation I have written that n is a function of uh, the radius. So radius. So it's not just constant refractive index, but it is a function of radius. So it's very high in the center, but as you go on radially away, you can actually reduce the refractive index. Right. So you can write your own equation, analytical equation over here, for example, like this. 
like this. Okay, you can write a two-dimensional equation. like this okay and then so this is the name of the function a n1 and this a n1 as a function of x and y spatially varying as you said in propagation so so for example it could be so it's increasing this so like this so it's increasing along this y direction your refractive index right so this a n1 you can define in this material properties, okay? A n one is a function of uh, y, for example, okay? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Little bit I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah, but you go through this Lunebug example. I shared this okay, with you. Sure, uh, sure. This is exactly what they are doing. What you are saying, uh, refractive index is a function, spatially varying refractive index. So once you go through this uh, documentation, you will get to know more of what they are trying to do. Okay, for okay. example, I think they have showed it somewhere. No, they have not showed it somewhere, but even in post processing, you can actually see it. So let me just spot diagram refractive index. No problem, but yeah, you go through this example, you should be able to get through. What is the next the third question? Uh, actually, sir, uh, my motivation is to study the mode profile across the curve section in this lithium nibate. Like at each point, my refractive index will be vary because it is an anisotropy. So in X or Z direction or in X or Y direction, if my, if I am propagating, so the refractive index is a function of uh, propagation as well as transfers direction, dimension. So, so that's why I means problem is like this how my mode dynamic is changing across the curve waveguide so curved waveguide that you want to yeah. model you see curved waveguide yes so what i recommend is that you first model with 2d structure okay, okay. so you for example you go ahead with this uh, we'll talk about this uh, waveguide tomorrow dielectric slab okay okay so this is just a simple uh, straight waveguide Okay, you can see this is a core, this is cladding, and yes. I will talk about yesterday, tomorrow, uh, how you can excite a dielectric slab. So this is a waveguide that is propagating straight. Okay, now straight. you can introduce some kind of a curve. Okay, okay. and then, uh, as I said, uh, you can also introduce the refractive index as a function of space. Okay, so as it is going for, forward, so this refractive index can actually increase or decrease. Uh, as a radial also you can introduce a function which will represent it in this uh, refractive index and okay. what transvers you said sorry i couldn't get this mode profile means at each point my mode profile will be different so how exactly my mode profile is varying across this curve section that i want to study like so. okay how the mode will change as it propagates through this curved structure yes yes yeah, yeah. So the, uh, one more curved structure I have an example is a uh, optical ring resonator. Not sure if you have seen it or not. Okay, so this is one of the example, one more example where a curved structure has been modeled. Okay, this is a curved. Again, this is a core and this is a cladding. It's a curved structure, but it uses something else. It's not the simple thing that we are using. So you can see this is the wave that is propagating. It's uh, one particular mode, but as you are searching, saying that the mode may also change as it go on propagating this uh, optical uh, uh, waveguide structure. So Actually, the intuition is like this because at every point your refractive index profile is different. So mm -hmm. the mode. Yeah, so that uh, so based upon whatever the refractive index is, it will change, and you can able to see. For example, here the mode is remaining the same, but in your case the refractive index will change, right? So that will change the mode. So whatever is based upon the physics, you can actually see this mode which is changing. So what I recommend is that you try out some of the models and we have five days. So we can take this on uh, in a few days also, next few days also. You try it out some model and share with us uh, what other issues that you're facing. If you're not able to do that, uh, we can also take on that. You can, okay. Sure, sir, sure. Actually the you... figure that, that you right now showing uh, actually, in this figure, they are considering refractive index as an average refractive index, and that's where they are getting the resonating behavior. 
but mm. if we little bit little bit go into the depth like how ex- uh, how exactly my modes are behaving so it might be different as compared to what okay. it is showing here so okay yeah, yeah definitely your, your application is different i'm just saying for example the curved curved wave guide that you are saying so uh, this is one of the example of curved curved wave guide yeah. uh, over there also you can model but here it's just a single refractive index not a specially varying the example of specially varying refractive index is given in this lunberg example lunberg okay. lens okay okay so we can just go through that example how to sure. model the specially curved uh, specially varying refractive index so you try to incorporate this in your model and you see okay. if you get some error or some kind of a uh, result which are not intuition uh, intuitional you uh, uh, then uh, we can look into that model okay sure sir sure and uh, one more question i think that you might be discuss in future like how to involve two different physics like if i have to do on electro optic kind of devices like so i have to involve my this ac dc module inside this wave optics module so can you also uh, touching that part yeah so uh, we have in the fifth day we'll talk about little bit on that but again it's a very big field so okay. we'll not talk about uh, uh kind of all the fields uh, so one of the example which is a uh, most closest with electro optical effect is mark zender modulator yes. so i'm not sure if you have seen that so uh, so over here uh, in this we have the uh, voltage which is applied to the optical field and uh, that actually reduces the uh, speed of the uh the uh, the uh, light source as it, as it pro- propagates the wave guide so here it's uh, uh so yeah i can just show you uh, the basics of it but to, to model from scratch it would be like a little okay. bit difficult to do it in a one and a half hour time but this if you open the documentation you can see this property so you can see this is a acdc module not exactly an acdc module but just a voltage so you don't need a, a acdc module to apply voltage you can do with the base package and uh, wave optics itself but you see this voltage is being applied and that voltage is kind of reducing the speed of this uh, optic uh, wave is propagating over here and based upon the speed you can see whether there would be a overlapping of the peaks of the two uh, uh, two waves or it would be a, like a, they would be uh, having an opposite phase uh, as they interact over here and based upon that you can get a zero or one so it actually worked as a switches over here okay yes. so over here it also has a step by step process to ho- make the whole model okay. but as you can see this is uh, quite involved so it will take some time to work okay sir yeah any other questions we still have some time okay thank yeah. you sir yeah thank you so one of the question is from uh, neelam sharma that uh, uh, she is from uh, so you want to ask your question uh, neelam sharma or shall i uh, ask from here or read from here hello sir yeah you can go ahead and ask your question yeah and yes, introduce sir. yourself and then can ask a question Good evening, sir. Myself, Neelam Sharma, Physics Research Scholar in Kumaon University, and uh, my field of work will be condensed matter physics, sir. My question is, what is meshing, and how we choose mesh size? Okay. So, first question is, what is mesh? Now, if you want to model this structure over here, okay, you want to model this plane wave, which is propagating in a downward direction. now first thing that we need to know is is comsol is a finite element method tool okay f e m what does it mean is that it divides the actual structure into small 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 parts okay okay it's a small 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 part it divides to such small small parts and this small part each and every small part is known as mesh element okay so this is a mesh element now <clears throat> next question is if you are dividing it to the small part what is the um, maximum size of the mesh element that we can keep 
because minimum is what we can put any anything minimum we can put below than the, the, the threshold value but what is the maximum size that we need to put so the maximum size is max size of mesh element is given by uh, lambda that is the operating wavelength divided by 5 okay and it's also like into n into r that is the refractive index of this material okay for example this is a silica material okay so for example in that case you and you're operating at uh, 600 nanometers Okay, then it becomes 600 nanometers that is 600 times 10 power minus 9 divided by 5 and you assume for example the refractive index of this domain is uh, 1.45 okay so this is the max element size max element size means if i just zoom this out so it's something like this triangle okay so this max element size you can define it as this over here okay so the max element size that you see over here itself is this value but the good part is that this is done by Comsol itself so you don't need to worry about this only as uh, one of the attendee Dr. Piali was talking about that uh, if it is a, uh, a refractive index is the function of uh, wavelength only then you need to worry about that but uh, as of now in this case you can actually uh, go ahead with this uh, uh, physics control mesh uh, physics control mesh automatically takes care of uh, uh, this relationship you don't need to worry about this Okay. What I understand is that even the recent uh, uh, models, uh, recent uh, versions of Comsol, the uh, uh, even the refractive index as a function of ref, uh, wavelength is also been covered in phase control mesh. You can just try it out. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Sir, one more question. How to choose PML domain size related to nanoparticle size or something? Okay. So, for example, you have the structure over here around uh, like this again. So, you are, uh, so again, what I was saying is that <coughs> uh, if you have a structure like this, square structure like this, okay, and you define this structure over here like this. <coughs> okay. So this is the PML domain as I was discussing earlier. Okay, now this thickness of this PML domain, uh, you can put it like lambda or lambda by two. It will not matter that much. Why it is so? Because within console, what is going to happen is that this the mesh over here you can see is actually stretched to a very long. For example, even though this is like lambda by two. Okay, but in within console, what is going to happen is that this structure is going to be stretched like a very long structure over here. Why it is stretched? Because it's anything that is going to, for example, this is a scatterer and this is a plane wave that is going to interact over here. This is going to scatter. Okay, so this is going to then absorb this domain. Okay. So dimension is not that much a matter because internally uh, it's going to stretch uh, significantly, okay. And uh, what thickness what you can put it is around lambda, lambda by two, lambda by four, based upon the dimension of your uh, structures, okay. Hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you, sir.
you. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Uh, myself, Gulam Anwar, uh, in from BRT oh, Mesha, yeah. Rachi. Actually, sir, uh, I'm in production engineering department. Uh, currently, I'm working in uh, radiative beam absorbing media. Mm -hmm. I have used a three dimensional model. Uh, in that, I have used Gaussian beam heat source. Okay. So, uh, while taking the Gaussian beam heat source, uh, uh, I am getting the negative temperature while the beam is moving from suppose zero to x direction. The temperature it is showing from uh, the initial condition is 27 degrees centigrade. But as the beam is moving towards uh, x direction, uh, after final simulation, it is showing some negative temperature also. But in many of the research papers, I didn't find uh, any. A negative temperature is coming or not? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe yeah, it is just uh... because of absorbing coefficient of mm -hmm. the material. Mm -hmm. uh, I have tried many times, but, uh, but I have solved the model, but the temperature issue is not yet solved. Sir, can you help? So me? my negative temperature means is like uh, minus uh, ten Kelvin or ten degrees Celsius like that. You are getting? Yes, sir. So, uh, yes. Degree Celsius, minus yes. ten degree Celsius like that. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, that's strange. Actually, uh, I don't know <laughs> what is the issue. When unless until one see the model, only then one can comment on such. Uh, one of the example of uh, uh, using this uh, Gaussian beam power is uh, silicon uh, wafer heating model. Uh, I have checked that model, sir. Yeah. Yeah, but so this is the uh, particular model which uses this uh, Gaussian beam uh, deposition. Mm -hmm. So, what is the reason you're not getting the heating? It's uh, I don't know. We need to check that. Uh, so, this is the example of heat flux. How it is heating it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Without seeing the model, it's very difficult to say why it is happening. So, if you have an active license of console, you can also write to support at console.com with your model. They can actually uh, look into that model and get uh, back to you. What is that issue? Uh, we have the license from ISTM. Okay. So two or three times I have tried uh, in console, uh, at support console, but uh, I didn't get the answer there. That's why I was actually from last two, three months, I am a bit stuck in this. So it's a bit hard for me to publish any publication. Even mm -hmm. if I have the license of through STM. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can understand that. You can also try something like forum is there, console forum. Um, you can also post your uh, query in the uh, with your model in console forum. Over there, someone can actually look into that. So as I was saying, if someone has to see that particular model and only then. One yeah, yeah, only that one I know that. If without seeing the model, no one can answer. It is a bit complicated. The maximum temperature I am getting is correct, but uh, uh, below zero degree temperature, it is showing that uh, should not. Uh, be how how big is that domain that you are getting below degree zero degree? Uh, it's uh, sometime it uh, whenever I increase the absorbing mid uh, absorptivity of the material, uh, the temperature is. Uh, going down by around minus 100 degrees centigrade okay uh, the maximum temperature it is coming okay but uh, by side by side it is coming from that uh, heat source uh, in z direction it is showing uh, at some location minus 100 okay that that is the main issue for me and even if I have defined in everywhere the ambient temperature or the initial temperature is 27 degrees centigrade or 300 That's Kelvin. Strange. I don't know. Yeah, it's strange. If you have defined it to be like 27, 
Wow, yeah. this went down. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's quite strange. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so. so Dr. Uttam, are we waiting for some other questions? Uh, I don't know if we have any more questions. I don't think we have now, and time is also over. So we can better close the session for today, and we'll meet the guys again tomorrow, 3 o'clock. Yes, that's good. So Dr. Uttam, you are the host at the moment. So uh, there is an option okay. if you go to the Red Cross. So it will ask you whether to leave the meeting or close the meeting. So you just click on the close the meeting for all. Okay. Oh, Look at the ribbon at the bottom. At the bottom. Ah, yeah. yeah. So we'll close it for everyone. Okay. Close it for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. See you guys tomorrow. So they're asking me save meeting files. So I click on save meeting files, right? Or what? These are some chats will be saved if you want. Okay. Okay. So it's chats only. Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't not save them. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Oh. Save. Okay, you save, uh, Doctor. Uh, okay, so let's try I will save it and I will share it with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good.